When you look at the Green Bay Packers passing game battery from quarterback to receivers and tight ends, they all have one thing in common. They all went to the Senior Bowl. So hear from the man who scouted them first, who recruited them to the Senior Bowl before the Green Bay Packers drafted him. And you're not going to believe it. He has ties to the Green Bay Packers organization. In fact, used to work for the Green Bay Packers. Senior Bowl Executive Director Jim Nagy joins the show today. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you'll find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen Every day, we hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. As I mentioned at the top, Jim Nagy from the Senior Bowl on the show to talk to us today about a slew of Green Bay Packers. Jordan Love, Senior Bowl, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, Dontavian Wicks, Jaden Reed, Grant Dubois, Carl Brooks, like the whole draft class plus multiple key players have come through and maybe it shouldn't be a surprise that the Packers have taken all these players because the guy in charge used to work for Ron Wolf, who also hired Brian Gudikins. Doesn't seem like that's a coincidence. Let's get into our conversation with Jim Nagy. Joining me now, the executive director of the Reese's Senior Bowl and 18-year NFL scout. Jim Nagy joins me now. And Jim, um, you like know the Packers roster better than anyone, it seems like, because um, <laughs> Brian Gutekinds and the Packers front office, they love senior bowl guys. And the Packers, this last draft, the draft before that, in fact, basically their whole offense right now, uh, skill guys is senior bowl guys. Can you just take <clears throat> us through the process of when you're trying to identify these guys, the process of saying, okay, these are senior bowl guys, guys we're going to reach out to because I think that helps people get an understanding of just how much study you've done on these guys before they show up in Mobile. Sure. It's a, it's a year round process. You know, this is, we're going on our sixth game. We just finished up our fifth year um, and really tried to build out a, a legit football operation five years ago. And we restaff it every year. We've got, uh, we have our, our regional scouts, our guys that get let go in the, in the NFL the previous year, but all former NFL scouts, like this year, we, I think we had nine guys, uh, with 170 some years of NFL experience. So it's really important that we have those experienced set of eyes and, and uh, you know, they'll watch tape over the summer. We're, we're putting the staff together right now. And then uh, we'll be at games every Saturday. They'll be watching tape all fall. And then once we get to the point where we feel really good about where the board is set, usually that first week in November, um, you know, then from that point, I will do a couple big zoom calls as a staff and, and get the board set. And then it's then it's reaching out to to the teams. Um, you know, there's we we try to get at least half the league every year. It's usually 16, 17, 18 teams. Um, and we'll just we'll get them on the phone for about an hour, hour and a half. Um, and we'll go position by position. And uh, the conversations will go like um, for running back. We'll have six running back spots open. And, and I'll just say, listen, we feel really good about these five. Um, do you guys feel good about those five? And then, you know, for that last spot, here's the, here's the couple guys we we're the next up for us, you know, do you, do you like those five? Like who would you, who would you have for this? So we just have those kind of conversations, um, you know, so in green Bay, those guys are always really good to us, Goody and, and John Eric and Milt and in the group. So um, yeah, it's, it's a really, it, it, we want it to be a collaborative thing because I mean, we're not building rosters to play a game here um, in mobile. We're, we're, we're bringing these players down for the team. So we want to make sure that 32 teams are seeing the guys they want to see. And this year, there was an added layer of, of Packers because you had a couple of Packers coaches down there 
um, including the assistant offensive line coach Ryan Mahaffey. How did how do you how do you decide how does that how did that work and what did you think of of those guys? Yeah, it was a different year for us. Um, you know, we had a full coaching staffs down here for 73 years. So the league threw, threw this out and threw us a curveball last summer. Um, and I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I think it was good for our players, first and foremost, um, being exposed to uh, 16 non-playoff teams rather than uh, just the two. Um, and so that was a, a, a nomination process. The head coaches and GMs had to get together um, the non-playoff teams and nominate whatever coaches. And then it was a selection process. So it was myself. Uh, a couple people from the league office and uh, a couple of other general managers. And we just, uh, you know, picked the coaching staffs, tried to be equal. Um, yeah. Green Bay had a couple guys down here, which was great. They were behind the scenes all week. And I think we tried to split those guys up. I think we had, you know, whenever we had multiple coaches from, from the same team, we tried to have one on the American one on the national, just so they could be exposed to both rosters. So uh, yeah, that was a cool part of the process. And uh, I hope those Green Bay, Green Bay guys got something out of it. I want to talk about this draft class in particular. That's going to be the freshest in your mind. I know that's the thing that that my audience probably <laughs> wants to hear the most about, but Jordan Love, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, like there's a lot of guys who have come through your program in the last couple of years. Let's start though with Luke Musgrave because sure. for, for me, and I'm sure for teams, there's a limited sample size with a guy like this. So from an evaluation perspective, how do you how do you look at something like that? Yeah, it's it's difficult. There was a limited sample size. You know, we only played a couple games this year. Uh, got hurt, and and he knew he knew Mobile was going to be a big stage for him. Not having that senior tape, so um, it's a traits pick. It's a traits pick and a makeup pick. He's got all the physical stuff. Um, he's a high high character guy, both personal character, football character. So uh, when you're when you're when you're trying to bank on a player's ceiling, you, you you need to have guys that have strong football character, and Luke has that. Um, and the cool thing about him, like he's not the finished product. He really isn't like he's got, he's got a ways to go in, in all areas, but, but, and I'm saying that is a positive thing. Like this dude's ceiling is, is through the roof. And I know he may end up starting this year. Look at the Packers too deep right now. It looks like he's probably positioned to, to be the starter. Yeah. Um, and I think, and I think he's ready for that. I do think he's ready for that. He can play both run and pass games. Um, but I really think you're going to see the best guy three or four years down the road. Um, you just get a big guy that can really, really run and stretch the seam. And, um, you know, they haven't had that for, for a little bit up there in green Bay. I mean, he's, he's, he's a true seam stretcher. So, um, yeah, best football still had him. I, 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 he got on my radar in this process, actually, I think from a tweet of yours, because he hit over 20 miles an hour based on the tracking data in, in mobile, which for a guy six, six two fifty is really uh, hauling ass for back, lack of a better phrase. <laughs> um, why do you think that that data is important? Well, first and foremost, it's apples to apples data for the NFL teams. It's the Zebra technology, which is in every single uh, NFL facility, indoor facility. So everything that we get is is same thing that they've got. So, um, again, it's just how do these guys carry their pads and how do they play in com competitive situations? So, um, you know, he didn't he didn't run quite as fast at the combine as we maybe heard, I thought talk to the guys out in Corvallis, like he might hit in the, in the high four fours. And I think he ended up being like a mid four five guy, which is still really, really fast. Um, but the GPS stuff was even better when you look where he's where he's stacked up against some of the smaller skill guys, some of the wide receivers and the DBs. I mean, he was running with smaller skill guys on our practice field. So uh, yeah, man, just a really cool combination of size, size, speed and athletic ability. Let's talk about Jaden Reed. Um, because this was uh, a guy who he has an incredible story coming from Chicago um, and, and the, the adversity that he had to overcome um, there. How much of the background do you get to dig into on these guys? It depends. Um, certainly not like an NFL team does. You know, I mean, we've got our staff, but the, the limitations we have, we don't have, a, we're not a billion dollar organization down here. We don't, we can't be paying for 200 hotel nights a year for our scouts, you know, so we're, uh, <laughs> we are, and that's, that's part of the importance of having an experienced staff too, is we can, we do, we do try to get people on the phone. You know, that's why you have scouts that have been a certain area for a long time. They can call the pro liaisons at a school or a coaching buddy on the staff. So we, we try to dig in, dig in on that stuff, but um, usually you only really dig a little more when, when we know there's a red flag involved. Um, you know, the hard, the, the advice that Phil Savage, my predecessor, gave me, uh, the former Browns GM, when I took the job was he's like, Jim, your draft is in November um, and say in, in a little bit in December. So, you know, you're not going to have the, the combine medicals. You're not going to have the combine testing. Like there's certain pieces, huge chunks of data you're not going to have. 
But if we, you know, if we look in a player's play history and it looks like he's missed a lot of time or, you know, a coach gives us a heads up like, hey, man, you, you really want to dig into the medical here and, and see what you can find out. Or if there's something off the field that our scouting assistants can Google and, and pull up quickly or someone in the league tips us off on, um, that can steer us away from a player as well. Um, but, yeah, I'm not real familiar with Jaden's story, but uh, I can tell you um, he was one of my favorite guys down here during the week because just the way he competed. Um, and he was, he was down here on a mission. Like this was a, this, this seemed like a business trip for Jaden. Um, similar to, it kind of reminded me when, when we had Debo Samuel in the game, mm. just the mindset of the player at practice. And when I'd see him before practice, how locked in he was, uh, and even, even before the game, um, he looked like he was a guy that was ready to make plays in the game. So, uh, so yeah, he, he's a guy we've been on for a while now. Um, cause you know, we got wind that he was going to grab, he, he had a chance to graduate early in December of 2021. Um, so had he done that, um, or decided to come out, he would have been eligible for the senior bowl a year ago. So we did plenty of work on him the previous fall. Um, so I feel like we, I think we, we had three full years worth of work on Jaden, where most years we only have two. So, um, yeah, man, I'm glad he went to green Bay. Um, the, the, my first job in the league was with the Packers. So I still, still a, a fondness in my heart for, for that organization. I got some good friends at work up there. So Jaden was one of my favorite guys. So it was cool to see him land up there. All right, we're going to get to more with our conversation with Jim Nagy in just a second. Before we get there, today's episode brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. I just had a great time betting on the PJ Championship. Um, live bet Brooks Kepka, crushed that. Had a Roy McIlroy bet that I was really excited about that didn't go quite as well as I would have hoped. But guess what? I was getting great odds. I'm really happy about it. And I have been telling people over and over and over and over The Packers are undervalued by the markets. Undervalued by the markets. Super Bowl odds, division odds, to make the playoff odds. I have all of those. I don't don't, don't think I have a Super Bowl ticket, but I have to win the NFC North ticket. I have a to make the playoffs ticket. I have an over seven and a half wins ticket on Green Bay. The markets are just not valuing them the way that they should. So why don't you take advantage of that at FanDuel? Because right now you can get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's right. You make a bet. You don't hit it. You can get free bets up to $1,000. That's not usually how this works. Usually you put a bet and if you're wrong, they, they take your money. (laughs) <laughs> that's how this exchange tends to happen. But new customers right now at FanDuel get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000. So go to FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more about how you can get that no sweat first bet for up to $1,000. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of the NBA. And thanks for making Locked On Packers your first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Every dayers. We are going to talk tomorrow on the show about Jordan Love and the pressure he faces, or in this case, doesn't face. All of that coming up on tomorrow's show. Back to Jim. Yeah, it's it's almost like the teams get to benefit from you guys doing the pre-scouting because they you, you get to separate you know the the wheat from the chaff in that way. We're we're like not even halfway done with with the Packers class that was that was in Mobile. It's pretty it's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> Um, two more receivers, uh, not guys that, that came in with, with high pedigree draft profiles, but guys who, when you watch them, it, it really pops out how natural they are as movers, as receivers, um, Dontavian Wicks, let's start with him. A guy whose 2021 tape is a lot better than his 2022 tape, which is kind of fine for you. Because as you said, like you're, you're August, September, like it seems like the 2021 tape might've even played more heavily into you know, like his selection for you guys than his senior tape would have. Um, that's interesting. I haven't thought about it that way, but, but, you know, I'll, I'll say this, like with transfer portal and all the coaching movement at the college level now, like you really do have to go back. You do have to have a broader back that, you know, not, it's not like 20 years ago where, where kids got recruited to a school they stayed at the school, the coaches stayed at the school. Like this whole thing's so volatile now that there's a lot of different variables involved in the evaluation. So you're right. The 2021 tape for Dontavian was better. Um, they brought in a new coaching staff this year. And for whatever reason, things just didn't click offensively. Like even, even their quarterback, Brandon Armstrong was a guy 
um, that was in last year's class could have was senior bowl eligible last year. And a year ago at this time, we had a draftable grade on Brennan. Um, and he, you know, for whatever, again, for whatever reason, um, it, it didn't, it didn't work out for the offense. And, and I think what, what Tay had to work on, um, coming to senior bowl week and we talked about it when he got here was just his hands, um, the catch consistency, too many drops on the 2022 tape. But when you go back into the Packers, like the Ron Wolf prototype lineage of, of receivers, yeah. he fits that profile. He's a big athlete. Um, and what kind of drew me to him last, last summer um, was the double move route running stuff. You can see the athlete when you see a big guy that can really drop his weight and decelerate and then, and then accelerate. Um, and some of that stuff just was, was really good. Um, so big athlete fits their mold. Um, and again, I think his best, bo- best football still ahead of him because there's, you know, in terms of the hands part of it, similar to Christian Watson last year, you know, I mean, Christian had some issues with hands in college. So, um, so yeah, I think, I think, I think Tay fits their profile and, uh, to get to get a big athlete like that in the fifth round was a really good pick. I want to talk about two of the smaller school guys um, because I, I think that that is something that certainly in the media, but but everyone can to a certain degree struggle with trying to understand the context of these guys playing. And I'm talking about Grant Dubose and Carl Brooks, two guys um, who who were in Mobile. And and the great thing about the Senior Bowl is getting you you mentioned apples to apples on the measurables and and the tracking data. But you get to go against the SEC guy that you never got to face in college. You get to go against that, you know, like Grant DuBose actually got to play a first round corner um, and cut a touchdown pass on his head. Um, <laughs> but but um, this is an opportunity for them to say, look, against this better competition, I can really bring it. So as an evaluator, when you when you see someone like Carl Brooks or Grant DuBose, how, like, how are you able to contextualize what they're doing against a different level of competition than someone who's in the Big Ten or the SEC or the Pac-12? Yeah, I mean, I w- that's a really nuanced uh, answer there. We this is a this would be a this would be a podcast in itself. Yeah. but if it were I'll, easy, I'll, everyone would do do it great too, right? Yeah, I'll I'll say a couple things um, when it comes to the smaller school guys. I mean, there there is there is clearly such thing as a good college football player and a good pro prospect. Um, and, and, the, and, and again, I think a lot of fans and, and families um, get caught up in, well, my son's a great college player, but you know, for the small school guys, what I really start with, do they have the measurables? You know, yeah. are, do they have the body type? I mean, when you boil it down, the NFL is a genetics football league. I mean, it's, it's about, it's about what you're physically capable, physical human performance. Right. Um, so it's a big, strong, fast league. So, um, both those guys met those thresholds. I mean, Carl's a guy that um, at 300 pounds, 290 some pounds, um, like low 290s, played out on the edge mostly for Bowling Green this year, um, and tore it up. Did some really good things rushing the passer, and, and had really what I like to call smaller man movement skills, um, just in terms of change of direction and in fluidity and efficiency with his feet. Um, and, and so you didn't see him rush a lot inside. So that's, that was the benefit to Carl was coming down here and getting a rush on the nose and getting a rush from a three technique, which he didn't get to do a ton of um, in Bowling Green. And, and the guy plays really hard. And so, you know, in terms of our roster construction too, I should, I should talk about that a little bit. Um, you know, when it is, when it is, let's just say you got a three-year starter at, at Iowa or Wisconsin or a Carl Brooks. I mean, I'm probably going to defer to the Carl Brooks, right? Because again, trying to do this for the NFL teams, you know, if you've got a three-year starter in the Big Ten, I mean, they should have a pretty good sense of what that player right. can do against top competition. Whereas a kid coming from the MAC, um, that's kind of where we, you know, when we have to make those decisions, that's kind of where it falls. But, but no, Carl's the guy that uh, I went to college with his with his uh, head coach at Bowling Green, Scott Leffler, and I were were uh, at Michigan together, so I've known Scotty forever. Um, and he called me at the beginning of the fall, kind of saying, Hey, keep an eye on this kid. Like he's, he's, he's our best player. Um, he's starting to tear it up right now in the league. And, and, uh, and so we did, so it was good to get Carl down, man. I thought he had a chance maybe going sooner. I thought he had a chance maybe going in the fifth. Um, what did Green Bay, I think maybe took him in the sixth. I can't remember exactly where they got him, but, um, for a guy that has rush versatility, um, for a young player, man, that's a, it's a cool guy to work with. It's, it, he's, he's given him a lot. I mean, usually you don't find guys with pass rush in the sixth round. So. I want to, I'm going to just go back as we finish up here, Christian Watson, it seems like he's the kind of player that the senior bowl is for specifically. You mentioned like the difference between the Iowa guy or the Wisconsin guy and the, the Bowling Green guy, 
Christian Watson, if you just like watch the tape, you're going, can they throw him like once in a game? Like it, it would, they just, that wasn't the offense that they were running, but you see, you, you mentioned a DNA league. This is, this is, you have to have that physical ability and Christian Watson has as much physical ability as you will find at the receiver position. So when you started watching him, did you just like do a backflip? You're like, this is, this is the guy for our game who can come in here and show NFL teams what he's got that didn't get a chance really in college to do that at the same level. Yeah, it's a great showcase for those guys. Uh, again, I feel like all our players can help themselves by coming down here to, to a certain degree, whether even if it's not on the field, like even if they don't have a great week on the field, um, you still have plenty of opportunities to impress and help yourself in the meeting rooms and, and with these teams. So, um, you know, I'd say for a big school player, usually if it's a, a power five level player, if you can jump around, I would say like Darnell Wright did this year, the tackle from Tennessee came down here as probably an early second to mid second round pick and got all the way up to number 10 overall to Chicago. That's a big jump. You know, that's, yeah. a, that's, mil that's millions of dollars. That's a lot of money. Um, you know, I think the, the biggest case with the, you know, the, probably the best case of the big school player making a massive jump was Terry McLaurin came down that year. Those phone calls I was talking to you about with the teams. I mean, everybody had Terry in the fifth or sixth round that year before we, before we brought him down here and he ended up going the third. And now in hindsight, that looks like a steal. He should have went the first. Um, but that's like a two or three round jump for a, for a power five guy. That's, that's probably a little unusual. Uh, I think we saw that this year with Julius Brents, the corner from Kansas State, was was a fourth or fifth for most people, and he went in the mid-second to the Colts. But back to Christian, yeah, we, we had a scout go to a game early that year. I think North Dakota State played on the road at Towson. Um, and our scouts are down in the field before the game, and they're doing videos, the guys going through warm-ups. And we, we really try to bring the fan down in the field so they can see body type. I mean, I tell our guys, like, get up as close on these guys as you can just to show body type and, and, and show movement skills. And he ran a route um, in whatever video we posted that day. And you just, just the fluidity for a guy that size really jumped out. Um, and, and yeah, you're right. And, and what I, what I, again, I'll, I'll show one more quick story on him. I was at Northern Iowa. Um, I flew up there we, with, with a sponsor of ours and we, we do hand delivered invites now to some of our small school players. And we went up to Northern Iowa to give, give one to Trevor Penning, uh, who ended up being a first round pick of the Saints. And uh, their head coach at Northern Iowa pulled me aside. He's like, have you offered the North Dakota State receiver yet? I'm like, no, not yet. I'm like, your guy's the first guy. He's getting the first invite. Um, he's like, Jim, I'm just telling you. He's like, he's the fastest kid. And he, Coach Farley's been at UNI for 20 some odd years. He's like, this is the fastest kid we've played against since Randy Moss. And that's back when Marshall was FCS. So um, you and I must have played against, against Marshall back in the day. I was like, wow, that's, that's a statement, right? Um, and you saw that kind of speed on the tape. And then you just didn't know, like, okay, it looks really fast on FCS tape. What's it going to look like down here? And from the very first day of practice, I mean, it looked, he looked, like he was playing at a different speed than the guys we had down here. And we had a bunch of four, three guys in the game last year. I mean, I think we had six or seven receivers running the four threes, but you felt Christian speed more because he was so big too. So um, sorry, I got long winded on that answer, but yeah, Christian's a really cool player. And um, it was awesome to see what he did over the second half of last year. And that's why he's, he's uh, one of our co-rookies of the year this year. We're, we're having our hall of fame event here in about a month. Um, and having a charity golf tournament with him. So Christian will be back down here in about a month. Can't wait to get him back. No, that's All right, more from Jim Nagy, and we'll finish up here in just a second. Before we do, thanks to everyone who makes Locked on Packers their first listen every day. Every dayers. First of all, thank you for being here with us every single day. We are going to continue to be with you throughout the off season. Next week, our Rookie Orientation Series forges on. Our Roger Signature Series forges on more interviews we've had a slew of interviews over the last few weeks we are going to have a bunch more and we're going to actually get to talk about what's happening on the field at otas all of that coming up on locked on packers no that that is an absolutely awesome anecdote and just to bring it all full circle um ryan mayfee who was a coach uh in mobile this year played at u and i and coached at u and i so <laughs> there, there are just connections all over in there so um the last thing i want to ask you about it is the biggest story in Green Bay this season. I think it's one of the biggest stories in the NFL. Jordan Love. He yeah. is going to be the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. We know what that that sophomore, redshirt sophomore tape looked like. And I, I, I talked to Gary Anderson, and, and I'd love to have your insight on this. 
I talked to Gary Anderson after the Packers drafted Jordan Love. And I said, hey, what, what happened that second season that he was the starter? And it was, I think it's rare, at least to a media person, to have a coach be so candid. What he told me basically was the other guys just weren't ready. We had this, this group of veterans when he was a redshirt sophomore. We came in, it's a new system. We just couldn't do the same kinds of things. We lost all these guys. Jordan is going to be better in the NFL than in college because we won't have to shrink the playbook and all of this stuff. I assume you have coaches behind the scenes who can tell you that kind of stuff. Um, what was your read and and the information that you got on Jordan Love? And what were you hearing from teams through this process? Uh, going back to when he was coming out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very similar. Very similar. Again, I again, that year, I would never say that. Um, just because, you know, you got to be really careful sitting, sitting in my chair. You know, we've yeah. got to have these, we got to have these relationships with these college coaches. Um, but yeah, I just, it didn't, it didn't click. Like I just brought up the Virginia thing again, those guys are good coaches. They, they got the Virginia job for a reason last year, but for whatever reason, the, 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 what they inherited, it didn't click that year and it didn't click that year with Jordan. And we saw him really early in the year, that year at LSU. Um, that was a, that was a big game. And again, he wasn't playing with a lot around him. It was similar to the year before when we had Justin Herbert down here, he wasn't playing with a lot around him at, at Oregon in terms of offensive skill people. Now, Justin had a couple offensive linemen that went to the NFL, like Penny Sewell, but he wasn't throwing to a lot of NFL guys. Jordan really, Jordan really wasn't throwing to anybody. And he's out there on a field uh, against an LSU football team that was dominant, um, yeah. with a, lo loaded with NFL dudes everywhere. And, you know, with Jordan, you know, the, the, the year before tape was better. Um, and then I saw him throw that summer um, at a camp. And now you've seen him all these, you know, the last three years he's been up there. And, and the guy is a really talented thrower of the football um, and yeah, I knew, you know, talking to the coaches and doing some background work, he was, he was the right guy. It just was a, it was a difficult situation that year. So, um, you know, the, the Packers, didn't they, didn't they trade up for Jordan? Am I yeah. getting that right? Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, Goody, I mean, they've got, I'm not saying this cause I'm on the podcast and or anything. He's my friend. They've got a, some really good evaluators on that staff and, and you're not trading up for a quarterback. Um, if you didn't believe he was going to be a high end starter in the first round, I mean, you could just sit in the third or fourth and take a guy and hope it hits. Right. I mean, you're, you're trading up and being aggressive for a guy you, you believe can, can, you know, take you to the Super Bowl and, and get you to the playoffs every year. So um, I'm glad he's getting his cho his chance, man. I mean, it's been, he's waited his turn. It's been a while. I'm sure it hadn't been easy on Jordan from the outside looking in. I think he's handled it unbelievably um, that, that, I mean, with all the dynamics at play up there and what's been going on, I think Jordan's really stayed above all that and, done a nice job and just talking to those guys it, it sounds like he makes a ton of plays in practice that that gets you really excited about him so again we the outsiders we haven't seen a whole bunch I certainly haven't seen any um but talking to those guys sounds like he's been doing some really good things the last couple of years develop many developmentally where they think he's he's going to be the guy and you got to give him the shot you know I mean again when he gets on the field he's still you got to keep in mind he's still a really inexperienced player so um, if I'm the Packers, I'm just hoping by the second half of the year, he's starting to put it together. And, and again, look at what Jalen Hurts was year one to year two. Like I'm excited about Jordan Love in 20, I guess, well, that will be 2024 um, when he gets a second year starting under his belt. Because anytime he's a first year starter, it's going to be tough. And, it's, and, he's, and he's learning with a bunch of young skill guys. All these players we've talked about. I mean, I love these guys that were in our game, but they're all going to be learning with him too. And that's, I mean, your veterans are Romeo Dubs and, and and Christian Watson, that's, that's a, I mean, that's a, a young group growing together. So um, as excited as I am to see him play, I can't wait to see the Packers play this year. I'm really excited for 2024 and what that might look like. Well, um, if, if it all works out, Brian Gutekinds is going to have to send you a bowl of fruit or something because his, the whole <laughs> skill group is, is senior bowl guys. And that means that those are guys that you identified. So that is a, that is a really cool tie in there. So Jim, this is, this is really great. I appreciate your time. Yeah, Goody knows I like spotted cow. Maybe you can send some of that stuff down here or something. But uh, no, it's great. Great being on. Thanks for having me. All right. Thanks to Jim for joining the show. Awesome. 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 Awesome to talk to him. I absolutely love that Christian Watson story. Had not heard that anywhere before. Um, that is pretty incredible. And again, I just don't think it's a coincidence that a guy who cut his teeth scouting in Green Bay for Ron Wolf happens to like a lot of the same players that a guy who cut his teeth scouting in Green Bay, hired by Ron Wolf, who happens to be running the Packers, also likes. That does not seem coincidental to me.
So maybe something to keep an eye on here as we move forward. All right, tomorrow, a lot more to come on Locked on Packers. Next week, we'll be right back at it. There's players on the field. Football stuff is happening. We could talk about that. I'm so, so happy. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked on Packers. And anytime you want to come hang out with us live, you can do that on our Locked on Packers YouTube page when we go live on YouTube. So you can stay Locked on Packers.